you can't even catch him. So it's it is all on this Pango right now to whether he wants to go defusal or blink, try to set up with rolls and catch. And the scariest thing right now is how much Liquid can do with their PKB timings once they get it. If they can Roche with the Exo, if they can take all their towers with the Shadow Fiend, it's going to be a lot of grouping. And Aster's going to be happy just playing the farm game. Well, you can see the decision right now from Aster to wrap around up on the top side. We'll see if Liquid do run into them there or not. Uh, as Boxy's already heading on up to place a ward up on that high ground and just holding steady in the mid lane. Pichu's leading the charge here. Just holding that hammer. And now drop down a ward in the jungle as they're going to start heading down this hill. Pichu spots out Matumbo Man, oh, a whoops. quick little sight, and yeah, the pings are there. They immediately realize where they're at. Just need like one more step. Yeah, you know, just a little bit more that way, and maybe they get the follow up split earth. So no chance for a kill there. But do get some wards down. Uh, Liquid's unlikely to get taken away since they're sort of staying on their side of the map. And it looks like it's going to be a trade off of two bounty runes apiece. Liquid has this nice deep ward next to Roshan. Uh, I think it's pretty cool because the they begins. there's a chance Aster swap their lanes up. They put the Shadow Fiend mid, the Lushrak in a side lane, and maybe Liquid will want to swap their lanes up depending on what they see. So now they get to kind of see where everyone's going. Fortunately for them, Aster's just doing kind of standard lane. Mm -hmm. Hang out with the CM top, Lush mid, Sniper's going bot. So nothing out of the ordinary right now besides the Death Prophet safe lane is a little Interesting yeah. right now, this patch. It is something Liquid likes running. Yeah, they, I mean, they, you know, if they were looking, they're like, yeah, okay, they've just done this like very recently, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to Aster. And we've, it's actually interesting. We've seen some teams less willing, I think, to swap the uh, the heroes and the players in a sense. Like, there's a lot of teams who would maybe put their five on this Mercy just because it's in that safe lane, which Liquid is, you know, they're much more comfortable just doing something like this in this setup because they know that, if, like, for the vast majority of the game, they, you know, Boxy has this identity on the Mercy that they really want He's to achieve. He's still the four. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Right. Exactly which fits in how they want it to play for him. Um, as you can take a look here mid, Shadow Fiend versus Lesh. Uh, gonna get a couple of raise hits off on there, just get one denied out. So Ori, I, I think it's worth noting that this guy, I feel like last year at TI had one of the best performances that we've seen from him in the entire history uh, of his play. And well, you know, to be fair, Puck was really broken. The, I mean, yeah, you, you know, he's <laughs> this guy's a really good point. No, not to take anything away from Ori. Right. But w when that happened, he ended up getting knocked out by the rest of these teammates here. And uh, then ended up, you know, coming together with them. We'll see if they can keep that type of success that they had last year going in this one. You know, there's going to be a lot of eyes on the bot lane right now. Sniper, once he hits his level 3, level 4 timing, he has some points in Headshot, he has some points in Shrapnel. That's when the they can just kind of run down the Mars. And the Disruptor, a lot of the time, he doesn't save heroes. He just kind of watches him die. So if Sai walks up a little too far, once the Sniper hits level 3, it could be a little scary. Yeah, I feel like since Undying started buying like 6 mangoes and decaying, doing the uh, the Disruptor thing just looks a, a whole lot weaker. It's just like, no, I, I can spam too, guys. Every, everyone's doing that now. Yeah. They just buy 6 mangoes on the support. They just spam the... Undying's don't buy tangos anymore. Right. I just mean, 6 mangoes, maybe a salve. You don't need them. Easy peasy. Just moving on forward in life. They do get a little bit of pressure there. Pullback now on the Bobaka is a couple of punches with Tumba Man trying to kill him off. And won't quite be enough there, but even with all those mangoes, at least they'll have some pretty good regen uh, on the CM to try and get back into the lane quickly. None of the supports have made a move towards mid yet. I think probably at the four minute water runs, I, we could see Boxy move towards mid. If he gets a jump on the Lush, pulls him back, that's a pretty nice kill for them. Pretty easy on the Lush. Certainly the uh, the most mobile as well, right? You know, I, we all know Crystal Maiden. She's <laughs> not the fastest hero in the world. It takes a little while. Yeah, Marcy gives some flashbacks to Earth Spirit from a couple years ago when every time, every every position four, they pick Earth Spirit, they get level two, they TP mid, roll kick, your mid laner's dead. It's a constant play. And of course, both of these heroes very susceptible to getting kills in the mid lane, uh, depending upon their positioning. So we'll have to watch for that and any of those early TPs. But for now, at least, Aster looking good in all of their lanes, uh, particularly the Lesh there. Four denies as Zai, talk about it, is getting ran down a little bit by that level two shrapnel. One already playing a bit aggressive on the Mars. The boots pick up on Zai is going to be really important, but he ends up going for a raindrop bracer. I think he just wants to tank up. The Disruptor does have slows and glimpse, so he has ways to 
kind of push them off of him. It's more so once they're onto this. Oh, oh my God! Quick jump and kill, and that's the rotation we were talking about. Yeah, that, that's mercy, right? You know, that's why this hero. All the phones popping up in the audience. Yeah, I see you all. Checking right away. <laughs> Checking that email. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what they do. Uh, regardless, uh, that first blood coming on out. And oh, what? Someone got one. I saw they're celebrating. Nice. Good job. <laughs> As uh, Matumbo Man is also going to get a little bit of pressure there on XXS and the pullback. Boxy ready to dispose and finds the body blocks. This Pango in trouble. This is one of those heroes that really can get uh, completely abused in the laning stage. It's one of the worst feelings when you die after like Squash Buckle 2. Zai, Chase, continued to run down. Monet right on top of him along with Pichu, oh. but it's not quite enough. Dodges back behind the trees and keeps himself alive. Maybe a spear through the trees looking for a kill. Can they get it? Doesn't quite look like it as he was salving back up. Bobica dies in the top lane while this is happening, but 3 0 start for Liquid. All off the back of the Marcy rotation. He yeah. gets level 3, TP's mid, kills the Lesh, walks top, gets two kills back to back, and there's a lot of pressure on Liquid right now. It looks bots not the best. It's not terrible, but Sniper's having a great time down here. They're Lesh. Uh, you it's know, gonna be Shadow Fiend just kind of crushing mid now. Yeah, it's gonna be a really hard game as well. Like if Monet gets off to a good start, like trying to find the sniper in the back line, you know, we, we don't have one of those classic counters. Some of those classic counters don't feel like very good heroes right now. You know, you think about like the Spectre in, in particular is something that like used to be such an easy answer at the end of the draft. Like this, you would've been like, oh, easy, but that's a good way to do it though. You catch him running. Uh, that is stun there. Ichu keeps him alive and well. And now Monet chasing, looking to run down oh, Zai. Nice. Again, another round of the shrapnel. He's got to run through it, trying to the escape, headshot. but Zai uh, is going to be brought down. Monet making quick work of that Mars. That was pretty much a defensive spear that he missed, right? Like, yeah. trying to just, like, get the sniper further away when he went for the retreat. It's it's a really nice stun there. to kind of break the glimpse spear off. Again, I think Astro right now, they're just playing for the Pango level 6. These lanes are not mm -hmm. amazing for them, just outside of the bot lane. And they need the Pango 6 to be able to rotate to the side lanes. The Lush Rack has some play on mid, but anytime the Shadow Fiend is just having a stable, strong lane. You don't really want to bring heroes to the lane and give them opportunities to get more kills. Especially with MRC being there, as Fox is already back. And down bottom, more aggression coming out as Insania and Zai were trying to take down Monet there. Couldn't quite Radiant find him all the way, but Boxy killed. moves in, snipes a courier, no chance for a kill, as they did already get that DD rune on Mickey. And Boxy, like, he did run right through Boca as well, so... They're going to know there's a ward here somewhere. Maybe he'll miss on the sentry because it can be a bit tough to find it, but I'm going to keep an eye, try and keep an eye at least on these stacks that Bobica's getting ready here for one of his allies. Try and queue those ones up for sure. As Well, he'll take a creep along the way too. That's what the CMs do. Exorcism popped up top. Matumbo Man trying to get some good pressure onto this tier one tower. As success is just going to have to deal with this should be fine. It's about down to half HP. I really like this exorcism. So I feel like it, it, it ends up waiting until like level 7 or level 8 to get popped anyway, when people tend to get it like at this part, because like someone has to rotate. You're waiting for other allies to be ready to use it. it. Oh, that's good. Oh, and in fact, if they can get this kill, this would be huge. XXS nice able spot. to dodge the raise, but it has another one in a second. No. A couple more punches. XXS going to die. And they still have Glimpse here, too. And so down bottom. can't even TP in, right? They're still chasing on Zai, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to find him there. But Bobica Glimpse back in. A couple more hits. And Mickey finds another finish. So five to one. And in fact, after they make that move, they're going to TP bottom with Tumba Man. Goes in and finds another kill. Liquid are just cooking here. Yeah, Mickey TP's back mid uh, right away too to catch this wave. So this is so much gold going to Liquid after these kills. This is a really nice movement. All, all the sieges got defended. Zai kills the siege bot. Mika kills the siege mid. They kind of alleviate all this five minute pressure that Radiant generally can happen when you play around the Lush Racks. And then they just break the lanes apart instantly. Shadowfin goes top, Death Prophet TP's bot. They keep grouping their cores. Every play now is probably going to involve two cores in the lane. Whether it's the Shadowfin, the Mars, the Mars Death Prophet, they're always going to want them to play together because they're the strongest heroes on the map. And this is a big one. Requiem out. Couple raises. Gets the kill. Dude, Liquid are looking on fire.
this morning. I feel like it's a play. Yeah, now Matsu, though, at least is in trouble. Headshot procs are there. Yeah. Very unlikely to survive here unless I can quickly get six. Well, another couple oh, rounds. Six. The Spirit Siphon trying to make it happen. Is it going to be enough for Tumbo Man living? Dude, Somehow, somebody, are you kidding me? But Tumbo Man walks away, does finally get brought down, but they got the kill onto the sniper. They do lose Zai. Have they gone a little bit too big for their britches? Aster brought numbers back and forth in just a valley of death. Boxy two who fall, so it looked tight for a moment, but the penalty was big. Yeah, this is where Zai just needed to not get six, because, you know, <laughs> the arena gave them hope. <laughs> hope is the most dangerous thing, Trent. At the same time, Disruptor's getting some beauty time in the top lane, almost level six. Static Storm, anytime you catch the Pango, the Pango roll is the fight right now. Every yeah. time the Pango shows up, the fight's going to be somewhat in Aster's favor. So if you catch him with a Static Storm, you catch him with a Silence from Death Prophet or a Mars Arena, that's how you kind of are aiming to play these fights. That's just fun. And you can see that uh, Aster's still keeping an eye on what, everything that happened top, because Bobaka's running back there now with sentries. Like, he has not forgotten. He's like, we lost that fight there. Still some stacks. They've actually blocked off uh, that same camp there as well. So uh, Bobaka, though, unfortunately, not going to find an OBS this time. So the good. scary thing right now for Aster is a lot of their heroes won a lane. Pango wants us in a lane. Sniper wants us in a lane. Leshrac's somewhat comfortable going to the jungle just because of how fast he farms. But on the side of Liquid, they're they're giving lanes to Disruptor for free. They they don't really need, they don't feel the need to sit in all their lanes. They just feel the need to group up and yeah. force plays. And I, that's the power of uh, Marcy, right? So like, I, I think that's why Boxy, like, it's just Marcy, Clockwork, Tusk. Like, they, it just lets them do this exact same style every time. Scan was able to hit there. Liquid walk up the hill after the fact and now going to try and contest this stack that's been built up a little. It's three camps and one of them's the Mud Golem, so not easy to sneak that one. And in fact, Aster will zone back Matamba Man. You can see how confident Foxy is, though. He just is able to walk up hills, and if you go on him, he just rebounds away. And not much to do. There's no... Oh, or rebound on top of you. Up top. Now, nah, Bobaka. Pace. Gonna get chased, and the dual supports come in to kill the other one. Ori looking for a little bit of retribution here. Will run into Insania, and while they have Glimpse, he's not gonna get Glimpse that far. They move in, XXS right on top, Insania in trouble, and likely to fall. So, Aster make a solid move, able to claim a kill. It's... It's good. This is this is what Astro needs to do. They need to group around. Probably the Lush and the Pango need to play together, try to force towers, force objectives with the roll. And anytime Liquid sees where the Pango is on the map, they can just go to the opposite side, force towers, force objectives. And Astro's either going to have to TP in five heroes and even still lose the fight, the tower, or they just commit to a trade. Yeah, now they're going to bring three heroes to the mid lane as well here. So perhaps some quick action. They, they do have smoke if they want to, but they're seeing that there's no real rotations down bottom. They don't necessarily need to join up. So. Gonna wait till they push this out a little bit here before they start uh, playing a little bit more aggressive. I'm sure they want Link up though with Zai since he does have that arena. Smoke indeed as Liquid head down. Will run into Pichu here. Zai playing dumb. Well, actually find him as they're looking for the other kill onto Boca. So get the glimpse back, pull him in. Stun, keeping him away and actually just dropping Yo, Ori. Ori just keeping in the middle. Uh, in some trouble. Ori likely to fall now in the middle of all of them. So they get one kill on the Marcy, but then lose their big bad Lesh. XXS shows up. This could be the fight winner. And with that, Liquid are going to get a little bit of a disengage. Zai trying to find a snipe with the spear. Doesn't manage to get it. And he too is going to get punished. But Aster, a little bit bold with the Lesh. They still get a couple kills in return. It's a very bold TP. Yes. <laughs> There was, a, I think, a slight miscommunication with XSS because he, he, like, he sees the Pango there and he had roll and he's like, oh, okay, like we're gonna, we're gonna have a fight together, right? I think here, he also right? sees everyone's going on the Crystal Maiden. Who's yeah, like, they're, they're distracted. Yeah. They're on the CM. They're gonna have to use all their stuns there, and I'll be have free reign of the fight. I think right now, Aster, they need the Blink Dagger on the Pango and the level or the minute 15 shard for Sven is gonna be really impactful versus the Shadow Fiend armor and the Death Prophet. Can see right here as well that they did immediately change <laughs> up and left. They're like, all right, Boxy, you got that one right. As <laughs> so the rest of the team, yeah, there was a recent ledge. change now that the outpost TPs I think are default seven seconds to start. Mm. So now there's just so much time. Once you see the TP, you have a lot of time to just walk backwards, go take the fight, and you, you see the idea. He wants to backstab the yes. fight kind of and appear behind them, but a nice read by Liquid to just change targets instantly. Yeah, no successful uh, pincer maneuvers here, unfortunately.
They did still get Zion that in. A uh, little engagement, though. And he has definitely been the most hurt of the cores in the entire game. You can see SF nursing that pretty substantial lead uh, over the rest of the cores. And if you're Liquid, that's definitely what you want to see. But uh, how much of a concern is it that you've still got that tri-core from Aster looking good there? I think it's all on the Shadow Queen BKB timing. If he gets it and they're able to actually force objectives and force timings, It'll look really good for Liquid, and they're just gonna their gold leader is just gonna skyrocket off the BKB. Shadowfiend's BKB will give Death Prophet and Martyrs both of their BKBs just off of his. And on Aster, all they need to do is find a way to kind of slow the bleeding, slow the timings down. Because once they hit their timings, they hit the Bloodstone, maybe in another item on the Lush. The sniper hits his uh Dragonlance Maelstrom is generally what people are going, or a BKB, then he starts pumping out damage. The Sven gets shard. Yeah. Tango's gonna get this. It looks like he's actually gonna go for a Wraith Pact instead of the Blink. That's, That's a pretty cool idea to try and, like, because he is just building into that concept. Like, he knows what his idea is, right? Like, I need to initiate and I need to try, like, like some additional tank ability for my Lesh Rack. Yeah, he, he, he needs to somewhat carry the game in a sense of yeah. his, the amount of impact he's gonna have in terms of the team fight, but his carry is just being in there, tanking and stunning. He doesn't have to damage heroes, he doesn't have to do much, he just has to exist there and create chaos. The thing I've learned in this TI is a Wraith Pack is a good item. It's a that's, very good item. It's my number one takeaway, and XXS queuing that one up. So and Right now, Liquid do not have a Wraith Pack queued up. Well, the Wraith Pack advantage will be in Aster's hand. Yeah, for this is a pretty hard game to figure one out for Liquid, I would say. Yeah, the, the cores have very important items they need to buy. Mars. You would think that the Vlads is very good on the hero, which it is, but the Blink and the BKB are just too powerful for yeah. what he needs to do as a hero in the fights. Oh, but Foxy. Courier actually miss up hill there. Chasing, side, they throw out the stun, does a little sneak to the side for Pichu, and that keeps him alive. So still a very even game as we wait for these timings to come online. And Liquid hoping to control this side of the map with uh, all the tier ones now pretty much claimed. Yeah, I mean, that BKB is on the way here very soon for Mickey, right? And then uh, they probably go up the triangle, get some wards down, set prepping boards of Roche. Liquid's, uh, I would say Liquid's stronger in a sense of team fight slash like holding areas. Anytime Liquid wants to walk to an area, take and say like, this is ours, you fight us, Astro's gonna walk away. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. gonna wanna take these fights. They're gonna walk away, keep farming, hitting their timings. But Aster, you know, if Liquid walks too far forward, the Sniper gets a nice shrapnel, gets a bunch of hits off. That's where Liquid just has to be careful of their amount of aggression. They have to control it. They have to keep just taking the small advantages, keep building, keep building. And then at some point, that's when they hit the Roche, hit the throne. Obuka well, has been given a lot of space in this mid lane. Already has drums completed, going in for the Aether Lens next, which is going to give even more of that power to just sort of poke and prod as Liquid go for the wraparound back behind the tier one tower. Won't run into anybody there as uh, you can see Aster only leaving that one support mid and just keeping the lave shoved yeah. out whenever possible. It's a dangerous place right now, this mid lane. You know, some smoked up enemies on the other side there. The BKB is finished on Shadowfiend and they want this tier one mid. It opens up the map a lot. You can go into both jungles through the mid lane. You can actually push oh. your creeps past the tower. He skipped the blink. Yeah. Finished the full Wraith Pact. All right, Pango gets it done now. Liquid Everybody right now, fight. I think he noticed the Death Prophet went for Yules first. The Mars is also not having an amazing game. He went Falcon Blade. So his game's not terrible, but it's not going to be a fast BKB. So he's not really going to have issues catching heroes with the roll or being forced to start the fights purely with roll. He just kind of has to be able to, you know, when Arena drops, you roll in and save your team. Yeah. Or when they start kind of walking in up your hill, you start the fight with roll. I, I think it's just interesting because now I feel like they don't have much initiative. I think it's very hard for, like, let's say they do want to, you know, take a fight, they have a good opportunity. It feels like it's gonna be very difficult for Aster. And this uh, round, again, you've got the Blink Dagger Plus done on his eye as the stun finds him just out of nowhere. Quick and easy with the smoke kill. Mickey was not prepped for that one. Yeah, Can sometimes they find any more? You just have a great ward. That's a that's a great ward to have. That's just a free, free fight. Oh, pulls him out. Oh, and pulled him out of the arena. Tries to get out of there. Ori now finds one. Zai in trouble. This fight has gone terribly for Liquid as Monet is going to run down this Mars. Matumbo Man still surviving through it, though. Can he do the damage? The rest of his team couldn't. I don't think so. Matumbo Man also starting to fall. Only the Pango has died. And on the other side, Aster take down everybody but the supports. That was a nice just chaining the plays. Yeah, it the was Shadow so fast. And in, the, in the same role, he keeps rolling down yeah. behind the tower. He forces his play, and he does his role. He goes and he dies. He takes a bunch of spells. He forces Liquid to want to keep continue fighting. And the arena, the sniper, and the lash, but they have no damage now because everything's being used on the Pango.
Yeah, instantly like running towards that mid lane, dropping that uh, additional ward down to give even more vision because, you know, lacking that blink dagger, it, it is the vision, right? You know, talking about like it's poor initiation at this point because he went for the full rate back. It doesn't matter. If Sven can run up smoked and just throw a stun, that, that's like the best case scenario as a support Sven, particularly, uh, you know, aside from your shard, that's kind of your other big thing, right? And you can immediately see that Mickey pinged out. All right, they've got wards up in this area. It doesn't quite connect, though, on any of those. Uh, observers, I'll see if Insania is able to spot the other yeah, one. Yeah, it's this or not. really nice deep board above the outpost. Yeah, that Astra has. It just has this tiny sliver of vision of the camp where they just saw a shadow fiend. If he was, if he was like ten units to the right, maybe right. he doesn't even get caught by that stun. But Insania gets the D ward. Oh, ten to eleven, and you can see the replay here. For a moment, I Dying thought that it was, out. you know, Zombie maybe even attack. Pango could have survived through that since Boxy had pulled him just out of the static storm, but it didn't end up matter. He was still silenced. Yeah, they had to, like, chain the, the, uh, the Death Prophet one uh, additionally as well because of that. But, yeah, Zai, uh, unfortunately, not able to uh, to get the fight they want. Probably, like, because it took so long to take down the Pango, essentially, right? right? Like, he had no follow-up uh, from his friends in time. Yeah, they have the the Lush and the Sniper are very strong. So when, when you're forced to use spells on just a Pango, you're kind of letting these damage cores survive the spells. And like we said, Liquid is between the Mars and the Disruptor. They're very, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the team fight. They do so much. They have so much control, so much fight. And then it's maybe on the Marcy to just continue to catch. Maybe it's on the Death Prophet to just keep being able to run in. But this 10 to 15 seconds of Liquid's fight is their strongest. So when you just force that all on a Pango and you don't deal with a Sniper, he just gets free reign in the fight. I mean, the good news is, though, is that he didn't have time to BKB and waste his nine second charge. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. They still have the shot of him BKB. The positives. <laughs> Gotta look at him. Matu is also finishing his BKB up. He's about 300 gold away. Ooh. Heads up there. Zai gets away just in time. XXS will not manage to catch onto that Mars. But a really good fight one, like we talked about for Aster. There still is that bottom tier one tower that they have yet to claim. The, the scary thing I see right now uh, for the side of Liquid is that Zai just has a blink dagger, no BKB. Yo. And he's basically, he has to be able to blink in and stun and preferably survive when he blinks in an arena stuns. But there's so many different things on Astro that can catch him to either cancel his blink between like the shrapnel or random swashbuckle, or maybe he just blinks in and gets instantly stunned by the pango roll. True. And it's just a lot on the back of him to, if he gets these good spears, these good arenas, it's gonna be great for Liquid. I, I think the Aster as well have an like, excellent read on everything that Liquid want to do right now. Like, you know, you point out the side of the game, like this is their timing. They want these BKBs. It is it is something that Aster are also well aware of. And so the positioning of their uh, their heroes are like always having like the Leshrac, the Sven, and the CM kind of like staying up front while you then have the Sniper just farming a little bit behind them. And go sort of nearby as well, can join very quickly with the roll. They're shutting out that area of the map for such a long time that Liquid have missed out on that roast timing. Max amounts of force stats getting picked up for Liquid. They have the Dragonlance uh, completed, <laughs> full one Hurricane Pike. But you can see as Aster ready to move on in, Liquid, they have an idea that this is happening, but it's going to come too late. Yeah, they had wards nearby, but it was too late. They might still look to fight. Aster might not expect oh, this fight. Zai, he's running right into a Mone the there. Dream, the have dream. it, but the BKB is out already. But Tumbo Man trying to survive has the BKB running on top of Pichu. Now trying to take down Mone. All three cores on top of him, but it's not quite going to be enough. The Static Storm, a good connection. Oh, okay. The Spear, they got him. Mone will fall. That's one life. Still a lot of exorcism left. And meanwhile, Boxy gets the stun with that rebound. Requiem up on the high ground. Keeps chasing down. Mone in trouble, wanting to kill him all off. Does he have enough? He's surviving the little sniper. He's so strong. He's so big. What did it happen? Oh, Insania now turns. They didn't have enough for the second life. That Warcry armor coming in from the Sven completely demolished up. And the root from Bobaka. Liquid, they're all going to fall. Pichu came in like riding from down the hill. He had like 10% HP. I'll save you. Stuns up on Mickey, runs over, gets another war cry off, and they turn that entire fight around. They just they couldn't quite get that last bit of damage after the Aegis. It was looking really scary. Uh, Ori actually didn't get his ult off. So he got silenced with no ult running. He pops his bloodstone, he gets silenced again. He doesn't get his ult off. So he didn't even lifesteal at all in that fight. He's like almost full mana. So <laughs> he did 600 damage. <laughs> really big carry. <laughs> that is crazy. And it, it still took them so long to take him down. And especially the way it starts, right? Like they find Monet, he's forced to very early BKB. All he does is hit Zai the entire time. Zai is going to back away. Yeah, <laughs> into the bulwark. He's the back away. Wave of the step. Great force staff play there as well. But then Zai eventually gets the blink in. 
But on this reset, it's so hard to believe that with a, a Requiem from the high ground like that, they couldn't get this finish. Yeah, absolutely insane. <laughs> and Pichu, he just comes like running in from the right right now. He's like, there he guys, is. I'm here, don't oh, worry. <laughs> <laughs> just barely, and he it's survives. enough. Yeah. What a huge play from Aster as they are able to survive that fight. And again, very even, even in the live game right now. Uh, but things could start spinning pretty quickly out of control if Liquid aren't careful. Yeah, a, a lot of that fight, I think, actually was on the Pango, even though it didn't look like he had much impact. He rolls and it forces the Death Prophet BKB and the Shadow King BKB. Yeah. And they, they hit him, you know, Shadow King takes him down maybe 75% health, but he's fine trading roll for your BKB. He knows that if he uses his roll, he can still push Rage back, he can still be tanky. But once you press your BKB, you can't really fight the CM, you can't fight the, all the stunts on the side of Aster. Yeah, and now after that Wraith Pack, he's already picked up the Shard, and he's just about to get his Blink Dagger there as well. So, and have a whole other level coming from XSS soon. Well, Tier 1 Tower taking the bottom, and Aster, they are continuing this Onslaught here. 4k gold lead. They're going to see Zai in behind now, catching that next wave. Yeah, so there is a, a glyph here as well from Liquid. They are going to pop it, just kill the wave, so... We'll see uh, how dedicated they are. Or is uh, a BKB being the now, first so tier two, yeah. It's it's very hard, I think, for Liquid to now fight, like, ever take a fight into Aster. Whenever Aster sets up, the Sniper has heroes at the front to protect him, the Pango's going to get his roll up. That's where it's scary, but anytime Aster walks into the stuns, the Disruptor glimpse, you know, they go too far hitting a tower and he gets clips back. That's where Liquid just pumps out the Whoa, damage. Oh, Zai, big play. He catches the Blink Dagger Courier. It was a flying on its way out to XXS. Oh, that's real big. Yeah. So a nice little window here. I mean, again, there's no Roche for another four minutes, uh, at the very least, since that Aegis was immediately oh. reclaimed. So likely to have a little bit of downtime here before a big push, but they could go for some type of a smoke play uh, if there is that item timing that they wanted to hit, like the blink. Yeah, to me, it buys time for Zai's BKB as well, right? Like, he's finding all these waves inside the map. He just gets it now. So if they were able to fight, force a fight now from Liquid, and he knows that there was a blink dagger on there, it could be a great timing for them. Four of them on the map. All of them up and ready. Eight and nine seconds. As... Boxy also getting close. He's about 800 gold or so away from finishing off his. Yeah, and right now the vision advantage is in Liquid's favor. They've been seeing quite a few of these movements here from Aster because of the wards that they have, whereas um, Aster have nothing. They, they can't see anything that's going on on that dire side of the map right now. So they're going to rely on these waves finally getting pushed out to see if they can spot something. My favorite thing right now is we're going back to the old days of Shadow Fiend, Shadow Blade, Sniper, Shadow Blade. <laughs> Jeez, that was, that was when I started playing Dota. Every game was just a drow building a shadow blade and Rickies. It was just invis everywhere. <laughs> I mean, still pretty strong when you can build up into that uh, that break. Love to see that one. But sniper, all of his attack range will be gone. So sad. I I think uh, right now Liquid still has a lot of damage, Ooh. even though they're slightly behind. Force out that BKB. Zai might need to throw the arena if he wants to live here. Even yeah, bag it up, you know. Get on out of there, buddies. Do use the glimpse, okay. No Ori here in this fight. Could take another one after. Mickey chasing. Invis, Monet is also gone and chase. away. Can they do it? Doesn't look like it. That's a hard grab. Uh, after already glimpsing, of course. That was a, that was a cool little thing by XSS. Um, so when he swashes, he swashes without hitting them. Because when you hit them, it gives you vision, and there's a chance he gets glimpsed off of his swash backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. So he does a nice little thing where he just swashes and intentionally does it in the opposite direction, so there's no chance they provides vision to Liquid. Something we can watch for there later. They uh, maybe Dyer's catches himself out because of that. But for now, he's also got the roll-up completed. Ten seconds until his Blink Dagger is back uh, and in his possession. Liquid right now, they either need to kill kill in a spear. He hits a spear on the sniper, he'll just get blown up. Mm -hmm. Or they need to be able to survive the BKBs. And honestly, they want to try to hold the arena for after the BKBs. You saw in the fight in the tri-camp, uh, Zai just kind of kept walking at him his entire BKB duration. And he ended up did catching him after the BKB. And if it weren't for the Aegis, they would have won that fight. So Radiance right now, they need to find a way to force BKBs without pressing Arena. I think that's going to be a lot on Boxy with his BKB to just jump on the Sniper, pressure ult, kind of force his ability, his defensive abilities, his BKB. Mm -hmm. That's where Zai is just waiting, 
watching the fight, and then he blinks in, gets the arena after the BKBs, and Mickey's able to do all the damage. It has to be like a, a very quick follow-up, it feels like, where it's like Foxy and then like Matu's in at the same time, and that's that's when you have these like sort of side lane heroes, like kind of waiting to come in, like the Myers, the Disruptor, and, uh, and the Shadow Fiend. I mean, it, get their moment spotted. It is worth noting, you know, there's a reason a lot of people ban Marcy. This is one of the strongest timings in the entire game. Uh, and when you get that BKB, you can just solo cores if they're not careful and don't have friends nearby. Phase boots BKB, the scary, the scariest timing. <laughs> so much damage. It's kind of insane. As we will have a pause here. It's boxy mid flight. And it will be an interesting couple of minutes to watch too as we get ready for Roche to respawn. One minute and still it's capable of popping back up. And like you were talking about that vision, uh, Aster do have one ward up on the high ground right above the Roche pit. Uh, meanwhile, Liquid have one right above their tier two tower uh, up on the other side of the map as well. Interesting, Boboko actually went for a Yules instead of the, I think he was going Aetherlands. Yeah, he was for a while. I'm kind of curious as to what the, what's his goal with it? Maybe it's to try to get the Marcy off of his sniper. That'd be my guess too. They just smoked on top of that ward. Then Boba got laughed. They have a jump. Oh, they have a jump. Yeah, okay. okay. They, they saw it as they smoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was like, oh, wow. All right. That's fine. Just a bait. It's fine. A little. Uh, if they go farm now, Liquid's going to still be scared. Yeah, that's true. You, it's not like you can't uh, just assume like, oh, they you know, they saw that. All right. Gem purchase now by Insania. Die. As they are hanging out by another ward, so that is all of the vision pretty much for Liquid in this area, taking off the map. And with Roche capable of respawning soon, and in fact it's going to be one minute away, uh, Liquid need to be a little bit wary about that and their positioning to make sure they don't give up a free Aegis. Everyone's just worried about getting their next timing due to the fact of how hard it is for either team to really jump the other one. So everyone just wants to be able to be the ones who you walk into them and you lose the fight. That's why you kind of, Mickey is just kind of farming a lot. And it's just because he, if he has the damage, he can do everything Liquid needs him to do. I think uh, Matu, nice choice here with the Shiva's guard, right? Versus the, the Leshrac too. Oh, Very cool. Really nice. Yeah, that extra regen reduction will be Attack super helpful. So things to watch for here again is all of the vision into the favor of Aster. They get a Silver Edge completed on Shadow Fiend, and we'll see if they can now holding that outpost on Aster uh, keep this area under control. But a smoke up from Liquid. Let's see where they go. Two big things right now are if Pango gets roll off, it's probably going to be good for Aster, and whether or not Zai is able to hold his arena for after the sniper BKB. Those are the two big things, oh, and depending man. on what happens, it kind of shows. Who's going to win the fight? They're so blind. They're just running in. They dropped down a ward. That one is scouted. They had vision in the area. They so actually saw Aster, the sniper. No, the sniper. they know he's there. Getting broke right at the start. Punched a couple of times, but Tumbleman completely obliterated right at the start. Zai tries to escape from there, but Monet runs him down. Liquid just ran into death. It's so hard to try to take areas away, but they need to. You and need to get control of Roche. Pressure. You need to... They want to set up to defend the tower. They, you want to always be able to fight. It always feels very stressful when you keep asking yourself, you're asking the team, like, hey, guys, when can we fight? When can we take this fight? And you don't get an answer. Oh, that roll-up started just at the exact perfect time as well there, too. Thunder into the roll-up. Complete perfect chain stun. No saves uh, there in time. Not a whole lot you can do unless Foxy's going to find a shard or something here, right? Like, uh, he is stuck and done. And that is a free Roche now side of Aster. Aster. Concussive grenade also picked up now for Monet. Has a little more space distance in the fights. If he wasn't hard enough to catch already. Right. I think for, for Liquid, uh, obviously there's an Aegis, so you're going to be probably thinking about your high ground defense. But again, all they really need is to be able to start a fight cleanly. They need to catch the Pango. They need to catch the Sniper without an Aegis. Make it sound so easy, Gunner. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is this is a, a tough one now. And Aster just looking incredibly clean. Each of the moves that we've seen them make around the map, it's been with purpose. They've had vision down early on. Liquid are the ones that are trying to come in and oust them from those areas. And as you said earlier, it does become a problem when they're already set up and positioned well. I think anytime either team has a hill, has a kind of a ward or a high ground, and they get walked into, they're going to win. No, even though the Liquid's down 7,000 gold, I still think they have the ability to fight. But Aster is just... They just are constantly forcing so much pressure between towers, between Roche, that Liquid are always the ones who feel like they have to walk into them. 
An Aeon disc that I saw getting completed pretty soon too. I did see XSS has one. He has a one locked, so yeah. he's ready. He's he's pretty much prepared. The only concern with it is uh, he'll still die to the static storm if he gets caught. Right. But now the Mars can't really spear him and just blow him up. It's it's pretty nice. Well, tier two tower gonna be hit. This is the last outer tower for Liquid. With that said, they've been in this position many times. This lineup has had plenty of comebacks. We'll see if today is going to be another one of those instances as Aster are now going to split up a little bit. Ori on the other side of the map. So Zai kind of in a pretty good position for a fight. They get the BKB off, misses on the spear though. Pichu caught for the moment, roll back and forth, catching onto the Shadow Fiend. What a great roll Monet. coming out from XXS and Monet. I don't know if they have the damage to bring him down. He's there waving, looking for a high five. And even without Ori, they take this fight perfectly. Chase down another Matumba man in some trouble, trying to get a little bit of separation, but they'll kill Insania to boot. And all dies. You know, the fight breaks down. Oh. He just runs to the creep wave. XXS, he assembles it. And now in some more trouble. The ulti down. Godlike Monet. Liquid do not have answers for this Aster lineup. It's the same thing over and over. Yeah. Aster holds an area. Liquid feels forced to make a move. They walk into the ward. The fight gets hard. Anytime. It's just Pango. Pango's always going to get his roll off. You can't walk into a ward and prevent the Pango from rolling up. It's kind of like uh, they have the same weakness for both the Pango and the Sniper. Right? They just have no way of stopping their, their the very beginning of the fight for their game plan to start. That was a nice uh, concussive as well there from Monet for that initial distance. Make it kind of getting like baited in, right? Just like drawn further and further and then XSS easy clean up. Because even if they hit the spear, what? They, they kill the Sven a little yeah. faster, right? Uh, they, there's not enough control right now to deal with the Sniper. Monet has been playing such a fabulous game. And I think a lot of people, you know, it's, it was back at TI7, LFY, the lineup that he was playing on when he first really made a name for himself. And, you know, after a lot of those other really well storied players retired, he kind of found himself lacking a place. And now he's found it with this group of players and Aster looking to continue their dominance in this upper bracket. We'll see if Monet can keep it up. The rest of Aster can make the plays that they need. Ori. Blinks forward aggressively, won't find anybody. Is going to be glimpsed back. XXS still threatening a, a roll. What can they do? The stun, it's there. On to Matumba Man. Yule Scepter keeps him alive. Ori trying to run down Boxy. Matumba Man gets out. They pulled them into a fight with roll wearing off. Can they do anything? But Sniper, he's still always there. Ready to plink away. Ho, ho, ha, ha. Chase him down again. Mickey, Invis, everybody that walks forward is getting blasted. They're in so much trouble, they can't even force a glimpse. At the thing. <laughs> what, a, what a freaking destructive draft for Master. Butterfly is now finished for Monet. He... That's, look how much damage he's done. He's done quite a bit, yeah. He's done more than all the other cores of Liquid combined, almost. So it was a really nice sniper. It, again, you know, it solves the Shadow Fiend, it solves the Death Prophet. It kind of fixes these heroes where they walk in slowly and they just keep killing everything that stands in front of them because he doesn't stand in front of them. He stands over the hill, mm. two, two, you know, two yards away, two blocks away, just impossible. Well, and it was Matumba Man, if I remember correctly, that was one of the first people that was playing Sniper in this tournament. Yeah. He was one of the ones that showed the power that this hero can have if left unaddressed. And oh, he might be getting sniped right now. Now he's over in the jungle, caught and gonna be killed off. No help nearby at all, as they will bring down Matumba Man again. Captain, hitting the dirt. No buyback either. It's done. Ooh. Oh my god. Ori gets the blink out before the right click comes in. There's no BKB. It was on cooldown. Yeah, he's got a couple of stun. Uh, he's had some nice little split push plays throughout this game, too. Kind of quiet a few times, but he has uh, did a very good job of just like keeping up his own farm and providing the safer areas for Monet for the vast majority of it. Master, keep the aggression going. There is not an answer. They don't have an Aegis, but they don't need one right now as they will take down another set of racks. And you can see Liquid on the other side of the map just trying to farm up, get into that next set of items, if at all possible. But Aster are not giving them the time. They don't want to force a fight without Death Prophet. It, the game can look a little sad, but you always need to make sure that you're giving yourself the best opportunity to win. So now that their Death Prophet's dead, it's... You just have to give up. You have to play for the last racks. You have to play for the... <laughs> you have to play for the, the, the winning the game. You can't just play for... You know, we, we have to defend this racks, guys. It feels bad. Right. You have to just make your sacrifices. So when you say you have to give up, you mean give up the racks. Give up the not, racks, not yes, the yes, of course. Okay. Of course. <laughs> well, 
we'll see now as Blink, Boots of Bearing, Yules on the CM. Master have gone for all of these great oh, team fighty okay. oriented items. Maybe a, an actual moment. This could here. be big. Ori jumped. No, oh, they miss. And BKB, the turnaround. Boxy immediately TPs out of there. Now they're going to cancel the TP in from XXS. That was a really nice uh, try. If he got the fear on the right click into the yeah. jump, they actually could have bursted him. You have to do these small plays. Anytime you kind of split up your heroes, you go to the side lanes. Heroes always want to push the lanes out. Or he's been doing it all game where he'll go to a side lane, he'll push it out past the corner. And Liquid needs to set up these kind of traps to catch the heroes out. And every kill means so much for them right now. It is really your only chance, right? Or legendary high ground defense. Of yeah. course. <laughs> they still have the team fight. They still have the Mars Arena. This, the Mars Arena is one of the strongest spells to team fight with, especially once the BKBs are down. It's just the question of, are you able to force them to BKB without pressing Arena? And so far, the answer has been no. Yeah, and Aster, uh, I mean, they're feeling pretty secure about this, just thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll wait out for Roche, see what happens, see if we can catch someone coming into their base. They're, they're certainly in no rush right now. It is always tempting, though. You get that DD on the sniper bottled up. No boots, no problem. But they're doing the same thing that they've been doing all game. Hold an area, wait for Liquid to run into them. And when that will not happen, the uh, downside is that Liquid are going to need to keep these waves pushed out. They can't even really leave their base right now. One of the nice things, uh, which is why Aster has been able to hold area so much, is that Liquid doesn't really have any heroes who push the lanes without showing. Slowly. Which, it's mostly been Zai the whole game. He'll run to a lane, he'll kill it, run to the next, kill it, and he's kind of just chasing them, making them chase him around and keep getting gold. But for Aster, you know, Leshrac has boots to travel, the Sniper can just shrapnel and the wave will die, the Pango can kill it in half a second with both his spells, and they're able to just push the lanes quickly and then regroup, whereas Liquid kind of has to slowly show their hero, show what they're doing. Okay, the I'm not. They might be in but fuck it. Do you want to ult this guy? Yeah, you need to stun him. Turn me one, no? No, no, go, go. Oh. This is not gonna happen, bro. <laughs> Let's go. That's fine. Get it did not happen. <laughs> yeah, they, they, this is not gonna happen. <laughs> It's, uh, it's uh, one of those tough ones. Those moments are always so difficult to get everything working together in concert. Um, and of course, just high movement speed on that hero as well. It's also just, you know, you, you kind of feel the pressure of the game. So you're trying to make all these moves. You're trying to make them work. And you only have half a second, one second to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, that moment is very fleeting for the uh, side lane kill like that. McKay taunting it up there. Has to pop the BKB. You know, Dodge does have that rapier queued up as well. So Liquid may be a sign of the times and what they need, or at like least that. feel like they need. Uh, to win this one. So they are just still incredibly in control of this game on oh, Aster. This, this is my guy right here. This, this is, is my very, play. This is a very deep smoke. Yeah, this is this is what you got to do when you're five, right? You got to get these wards down. They're just like, there's no way they'd ever expect this ward to exist in this game state, right? So you can go for the, even the more obvious ones in this case, especially when they have a gem. So you kind of got to YOLO on like the high ground ones at times. They know that this Roche fight is, if they're going to make a comeback happen where it needs to happen pinging out that Roche pit. I wouldn't even mind him standing over in that corner there, to be honest. <laughs> Dude, that'd be crazy. Can you imagine? <laughs> the little Roche vision corner? The yeah. Hole. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there's been some crazy things with that. Uh, well, never since, you know, techies. Right, of like course. Gone, we don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, the, great, the greatest hero. And you can see Insania. He did not take his gem with him on this mission. He doesn't even have a sentry down. They could, they could just have a word of him and... <laughs> I mean, if they got you, they got you, right? Why, yeah. why waste an extra bit of gold? He's I got nowhere maybe, else to be, you know? He's probably just... I would assume he's just playing to steal the Aegis. I don't think there's much more their team could do, but Matsu TP's back. It looks like they might want to just smoke up and take this Roche fight. They got the Rapier on the Courier. It's coming on out. We'll see if this is going to be enough now, as Aster have not left this entire side of the map with the exception of XXS, but Radiant they will Austin. head on in. Ori in position. The greatest bait of all time. Ready to go. Spear. They find them all. BKB's out. The Rapier's there. Is it going to be enough damage, though? They turn on to him. BKB beats away. Now the damage onto Ori. You will try to survive through a Requiem of Souls. A couple more punches. They did it. They got enough. XXS now still rolling back and forth on top of them. They buy back on the spend, try and get into the fight. Bonet's coming. Mickey, he's got to be careful. Sniper, he's planking. He's running forward. No the break in the run, but they don't have it. So they keep alive the Shadow Fiend, but lose everybody else except Insania. Another Wait, big win. Live? Of all people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Comes in, he throws a Static Storm down as well on top of the Sniper. That was a great job delaying it, right? He like, kept the Sniper out of the fight for a very long time so that the Rapier could actually do a little bit of work and they could take down Ori, but 
Still not enough to get a, uh, an edge here for Liquid. And now Monet feels so, so strong as they walk up high ground. A break, a punch, a kill. Oh no, the Yules! Oh, Bobica, he's so strong. He gets the blink out after. They do it in style. Aster keeps the pressure going. They're going to win this game here as Divine Rapier is dropped. He denies his items, heads on in for the base. GG is called. It was a nice rapier. Uh, the fight looked really close. They almost killed the Lushrak instantly, but he had Stormcrafter, I think, kind of delays it, presses Yules as well. It's like three and a half seconds. He's just in the air. They can't do damage. So uh, it was a tale of uh, maybe the execution in terms of just like what was easy uh, for each team. You know, for Aster, they kind of just got to lean back, farm it up a little bit, didn't feel like...